So here we are, Midgley's Public House on the Brick Walk, Lincoln Center. Zach Bay Rudy, Justin Hawkins, Shakir Evans, two of the unsung heroes of the <laughs> basketball team. I like how you put that. A couple oh, of guys in, in, uh, in new roles, too, and I think the insight that you guys are going to provide here is going to be fantastic. So Justin is the video coordinator, yep. uh, the mastermind behind all of the. Oh, we can bring in the waters. It's, yeah. all, it's yeah. all good. Bring them on in. He probably uh, won't go that way. Yeah. Justin's a mastermind behind cutting up all the film and, and among other things, uh, you know, getting all that squared away. And then Shakir this year stepping up, doing some of the operations. But you guys have both been, been courtside. You both have playing experience. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Thank cool. you. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, first of all, what's the new role been like for you guys, the new roles? You guys have had to take on a lot. <laughs> Go ahead, Shaq. You, you. Um, <laughs> man, well, how do I start this? Um, first off, in the position that we're in now, since we're a man short, you got to be prepared for anything. You know, it, it, even when you think that you have something under control, mm -hmm. you really don't have it <laughs> under control. Am I lying? Not at all. You don't no. have it under control. <laughs> Anything could go left at any given moment, and you have to be, what I've learned so far is that you have to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Yep. Because if you're not, if you're a person that as soon as adver adversity hits, you get frazzled, it's, it's going to be over for yeah. you. You're going to crumble, and it's not going to go well. Yeah. Um, I've been fortunate enough to have someone like Justin, have uh, guys like Matt Spearson to, to help me a lot. Matt really... Like, he pretty much gave me the whole blueprint. Um, so I'm, like, forever grateful to Matt for that. But, um, like I said, having people to help and uh, just working, you know? Like, my, my schedule has completely changed. Yeah. Yeah. I, I used to wake up probably around 8 o'clock. Now I'm up at, like, 5 a.m. every yeah. day. Yeah. Like, Monday through Sunday. Like, I'm up at 5 o'clock. So it's, um, it's, been, it's been a huge transition. But it's been fun. Like, it's been really exciting. I feel like comfortable being uncomfortable is kind of the mantra of this whole program. 100%. Is that is that is that accurate? A hundred percent. Look at Coach. <laughs> I mean, like, that's I think that's his whole thing. You know, when we found out that Amari McCray tore his ACL, yep. look what happened. Coach, he immediately figured out, okay, all right, I can't. I, I don't. Have, I don't have a big now. So this is what I'm going to do. We're going to play. Uh, majority guards. We're gonna put this guy here. We're gonna put that guy here. He's 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 so good at. I've never seen anybody as good as him when it comes to uh, being able to adjust to to things that changed around him. Um, I think he's done an amazing job, and I think you guys are gonna see that when we get on that floor this year. Yeah, we'll get into Stoudemire in a, in a little bit, but I wanna I wanna touch on you. How how much has what you've been doing as far as the film? Elevated your your understanding and, and the way you look at, at the game because you I mean you played at a very high level I mean Shakir played at Catholic University you played at UNLV mm -hmm. um, but how has that taken your knowledge of the game and understanding to the next level? <laughs> I think uh, for me the preparation is different you know as a player you know you're fed the information from the coaches <laughs> uh, from the coaching perspective you know me being a video coordinator I'm watching five, six, seven games, you know, I got to study tendencies, not only from the player's perspective, but also the coaching staff, you know, mm -hmm. I got to see, you know, how they are with their after timeouts, I got to see how they are under five minutes, you know, are they playing with a lead, are they playing without a lead, you know, I, you know preparation is key, you know, just understanding all that, you know, and just seeing, you know, which lineups are best for the opposing team, you know, which hurt them the most, and just, you know, helping out the coaches in any way possible, you know, just giving them as much information that they could use and then they could decipher, you know, you know, what's going to help us win these mm -hmm. games. A couple months ago, I, I did this a couple months ago with, mm -hmm. with Coach Wicks and, and Coach Luster. Thanks, by the way, for pinch hitting last time with, with <laughs> no, Scott Meyer course. and, and Perry. Of course. Uh, Excuse me, bro. <laughs> I, oh, I know. A thousand percent. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but we talked about the change in the culture. Right. And I think that's been uh, the number one thing that that's driven the success year after year for this program since since Damon and the staff have taken over. But you guys have had a front row seat to the to the gradual change. It's yes. been a gradual change. Yes. Uh, we'll talk about what that's been like to watch it. I think uh, I think Chef Midgley, God help us, is coming over. Right. It is. Yeah. We're recording yeah. this on Halloween, on, by the way. Mike. This is frightening. Right. 
Yeah. Jeff, have a seat, Jeff, man. Yeah. No, we yes, we man. are. I don't know if I'm ready to sit next to <laughs> next to this, yeah. but uh, yeah, I, I, but this, this food yeah. looks so good that even sitting next to this, I wouldn't lose my appetite. I'll just say that. No, you just gotta eat your vegetables, man. We got a mic for you. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I know you don't want to mess up that makeup and everything. No, no, right? Yeah. I feel so pretty, man. <laughs> I can still do okay looking like oh, this, yeah, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're good. Yeah. You're good. Yeah. Just got to be confident. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wow. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's yeah. I don't even know where to start. So what's, what's, what is this? What's, what's this? So, it's Halloween, man. Yeah. I was out a little bit late last night, you know, just walking around this center, got hit by some homeless fucking, you know, zombies. So well, this is I, was, zombie. I, I guess I was hanging out at Hammer Ranch Center, not Lincoln Center. Nice. You know? I was over there behind the old longs, you know. <laughs> yeah. So is yeah. this supposed to be a zombie? Yeah, zombie. Okay. You, you, you're ready to eat someone's face off. Somebody yeah, eat your ready face off. Face. And you're not ready to eat someone else's face off. It's all good. All the, uh, yeah, my wife's like, oh man, he's look at you. You're a mess, I guess. <laughs> well, we gotta we gotta tell people to kind of ignore the way yeah. you look. We want to get we want to get them salivating over the. I mean, it's like Ben's warehouse. You gotta like the way you look. Uh, <laughs> you guarantee it. Yeah. Uh, say. Tell us what we have here because we have a couple of different apps that look unbelievable. All right, man. So we have. This is just a couple different options we have on our appetizer menu. We have two different versions of sliders. You know, we got a pork belly slider. That's pork belly. It's like cooked a long time, super tender. We wrap it in bacon and then fry it so the bacon gets crispy. Isn't that a bit redundant, pork belly wrapped in bacon? Yeah, it's, it's, okay. it's, uh, bacon, it's belly wrapped belly, you know? <laughs> That's exactly it. And then uh, we got the barrel of smoked prime rib slider with this like, amazing melty cheese and uh, some Bruno's peppers mm. on the top. Nice. Yeah. You can't be in Stockton without some Bruno's peppers. Yeah, you know, and then I get to say that I'm a farm-to-table local <laughs> guy, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I tell you what, these people are like, oh, are your vegetables farm-to-table? I'm like, well, <laughs> no. <laughs> dude, where do you think vegetables come from, man? Like, people, dude, they're kicking that horse to death, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, I love it. I take my dad to a restaurant. He was still alive at my grandpa, and mm -hmm. some like hipster waiter comes up to him. So we have these squash blossoms from farm to table. You know? <laughs> that way, you getting cute with me, kid? You, know, you trying to tell me I don't know where vegetables come from? <laughs> See, how about you next? You gonna try and sell me water? <laughs> well, what's going on here? I came for the steak. You right. take, leave that stuff in the back. You know? Hey, man. In all seriousness, like your sack. I know sack has kind of tried to build itself as a farm to fork capital. Yeah, it used to be What's the city of trees, and now it's like the farm to table capital I mean, of the isn't world. This, isn't this the farm to fork capital? I mean, there's more well, ag uh, here. Yeah, than right. Than this sack, is a breadbasket right? of the world, man. Yeah. 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 Shoot, sure, but I don't know. You're gonna have to pay everyone 15 bucks an hour. It's gonna be a lot of more parking lots, I bet. You know. Mm -hmm. So this is not a vegetable here. Well, it, it, it's local chicken. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's local. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, these dudes can't wait. Yeah. No, no, no. It's a it's a bird, man. It's not a buffalo. Buffaloes don't have wings. Mm -hmm. And but uh, and what's just, uh, so this is a vegan wing. Mm -hmm. Now I actually prefer these, man, because. Okay. I don't like the boneless buffalo wing, but mm -hmm. this tastes like a buffalo wing, but it's a vegetable. I don't know something. Looks good. Yeah, and, what if, and, and then that's a vegan good. blue cheese. Okay. Man. okay. So it's called good. a well, good. not vegan, but it's not really blue cheese. It looks like it's vegan A's. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. like hipster and mayonnaise. What vegetable is that? That's the cauliflower. <laughs> And what's yeah. the glaze on this chicken? Oh, so that is is like hoisin sauce, mm. soy sauce, uh, sweet chili. And then we throw on some peppers and some other like and some sauce other stuff. For me yeah. is, is and then you know you, yeah, you make it thick, you toss it. We so it's a triple fry, a triple cooked wing. Okay. We roast it, we fry it, then we grill it, toss it, grill it, so it gets all sticky. Nice. I like it. I like the, that. Uh, I just told you guys my secret, but that's what food's all about, sharing. You know? Thank you. Yeah. The uh, the seasons have changed since we last, since I was last here. I mean, you go into the yeah. fall, but is uh, it, how how critical are seasonal ingredients to what you do as a as a chef? Man, you know, it's pretty critical. You know, what I mean, uh, what what's great about being in California? I mean. Mexico is pretty local, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I get asparagus all year round. Yeah. And everybody in Stockton thinks, like, most people aren't chefs or even work in the food business. I mean, they see asparagus at Rayleigh's or Safeway all year round, mm -hmm. so they want to eat asparagus at the restaurant all year round because, well, this is the asparagus festival town. Right. I'm like, well, I'll get it all year round. Sure. <laughs> What's up, Mexico? I mean, California used to be Mexico. Yeah. 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 I mean, There's a little conquest in yeah. that. Yeah. So I just think. Yeah, seasonal, it's good, but people come for tasty food. You know, I put something healthy on a special, mm -hmm. 
Mm. They're not healthy people coming in here. <laughs> healthy people coming in here for a break. Yeah. They want to eat yeah. grub, man. They want, they want to get fat yeah. for a minute. Yeah. That's a little more of these will do it. Man, I, no. I, I got one last one. For right. you. Are you a little bit cynical about the, the whole pumpkin spice thing once we get to the uh, fall? Pumpkin spice is <laughs> You don't strike nice. me as a, as, a, as a guy that embraces it. Uh, you know, I love pumpkin pie, you know? <laughs> It's one of my favorite pies, no doubt. But I think it's because I eat it seasonal. You know? Right. Yeah. yeah. No one's eating pumpkin pie in May. No. Because <laughs> it's she like gave me pumpkin no, pie but it's like yeah, even though they're like oh seasonal and fresh, no one's making their pumpkin pies from the pumpkins over at Del Oso Farm. Mm -hmm. They're doing that stuff from the can, just like everybody else. <laughs> or they're getting that pie from Costco, saying they made it. Right. Yeah. 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 You can't beat that pie. <laughs> And it's like that big too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you get to eat the free samples when you go. That's true. That's true. Get yourself a dollar fifty hot dog. <laughs> it's like, well, bam. Yeah. Despite how you look, I'm still just so excited to yeah. eat this. Yeah, right you now. get after yeah. it, man. So, yeah. Thank you. Before Midgley came by, we were talking about the the culture change, and you guys have had the front row seat. So, yeah. what's it been like for you guys to watch how a culture has evolved with this program? I think. Um, it's been a great learning experience because you see how to take over something that I'm not going to say was broken, but it needs to be fixed. Things need to be fixed. Mm -hmm. And just seeing how, you know, Coach Stoudemire and the rest of the staff approached it from a blue collar mentality, like we're about to get our hands dirty and do things the way we want it to get done. Mm -hmm. And day in and day out, there was no give on how things could be done from a player's perspective. Like you're doing it our way and if it doesn't get done, we're not moving on. Mm -hmm. And that's how Coach took that approach. And you know, from, from my perspective, it's like, okay, he's not giving, so who's gonna buy in? And the faster you buy in, the faster things can start looking apart. And you know, from year one to year two, and now going to year three, you see the buy-in, you know, slowly but surely, you know, getting there. So you can finish your call. How's <laughs> yeah. that call fire, by the that's way? Good. Clock, you want some, man? Mm -hmm. That's bring some over for mm -hmm. us. Man, I think um, what I learned in these three years is um, how important it is to have the right people a part of your staff, yes. a part of your team. Yes. You know, when we first came in, Coach Stoudemire didn't necessarily have the people that he wanted. They weren't his guys. And so, you know, that was a learning experience for him. And it was a growing period for him in terms of coaching, et cetera. And, um, you know, last year, we, so we started getting guys that he wanted, the guys that fit his mold. And you see that you saw the change. We went from, what, 11 wins to 14 wins. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. And hopefully, you know, this year we get up to 17, 18 wins. Um, I think the, the, the people you have is so paramount in your growth and, and building that culture. Right. Because, like you said, who, are you going to buy in? <laughs> Him, coach, his personality is, he's a worker, blue collar guy. Uh -huh. Self-made. Self-made. And I think now we have guys that have that mentality, you know? Like a, like a, um, he says it all the time, like a second chance guys, yeah. you know, he got into, you know, his, his things and whatnot. And he looks at himself like that, like I'm a second chance guy. Uh -huh. And we have a bunch of guys who are just like that. And I think that's why he's going to be successful right. uh, with this team and building that culture because he has like-minded people around him now. Yeah, I think I think also, to piggyback on what Shaq was saying, I think we have a lot of guys that have a chip on their shoulder. Yeah. A lot of guys that got stuff to prove. You know, whether it's over-recruited, mm -hmm. you know, not making, you know, all-conference team, things like that. We have a lot of guys with a chip on their shoulder. We have guys on the staff that had chips on their shoulder. Yeah. Like, even though they're, they feel they're accomplished, it's just like, man, like, I haven't done enough. Yeah, exactly. I haven't, I haven't done, done enough. enough. Like I said, Damon I'm still has a kind of a chip on his shoulder. Oh, yeah, right? 100 percent. Oh, <laughs> yeah, day in and day out. And you, you can see it just being around them. Yeah. Like, you know, I say it all the time to people, like, I'm just a fly on the wall. I just like to listen. Mm -hmm. I sit back and listen to everything he says. Mm -hmm. And you just hear, like, when he starts get going, like, mm -hmm. his tone of voice changes. Like, man, like, I got a point to prove to a lot of people. Yeah. I got a point to prove. How, how is, just a, one more with Damon, mm -hmm. how is he elevated and enhanced you guys' understanding and experience of the game? Just coming from somebody that can break everything down in a way that I've, I've seen him do it, it's unbelievable. He's obviously, yeah. you know, 
one of the one of the great point guards to ever play in the NBA. But how how is he translated with you guys just watching him? Um, for me, I don't know about Hawk, but for me, coming from Division Three level, um, I, I'm learning a ton because <laughs> a lot of this stuff I had no clue. You know, um, like example, tagging a roller. You know, um, well, uh, tagging a roller. Uh, uh, lowest closest man, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. It was like we didn't necessarily learn that at my level, you know, and then just the way coach sees the game, he, yeah. he sees plays <laughs> ten, 10 steps yes. ahead of everybody, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and seeing that and being around that every day, you like naturally you're going to start seeing that as well, or you're going to get close, get closer right. to, you know, having that ability to see those things occur before they actually you know take place mm -hmm. and um i think that's been the uh the best part is having somebody who played mm -hmm. you know at the highest level and you know he's the, at the highest level in college and the highest level in the nba and he's done and seen so much that it's like for a guy like me coming from the division three level i can't do anything but learn mm -hmm. you know if not then there's something wrong and you're from Division One. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm assuming you're gonna say about the same thing he mm -hmm. did. Yeah, definitely, definitely. There's definitely things I'm learning from him that I didn't see, you know, when I was playing. You know, like what's funny is that I like one of my former coaches was one of his teammates, and Stacy Ogden. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, playing for a professional, like of course you're still gonna learn things. But I think for me now, the coach's perspective, his preparation for a game is unmatched. And seeing it, him prepare as college head coach and also him preparing as in, I coached in the NBA. So like I could see things that are being done from both the player and the coach perspective that I know that I can anticipate that's gonna happen in the game. And so like Shaq was saying, like, he'd call out, you know, 10 plays at a time, or he could assume, I'm not gonna say make an assumption, but he could go off of his past experiences and be like, okay, if a coach is down by three, and based off the way that he plays the game and he coaches the game, these might be the after timeout sets or special situation sets that he's gonna have at, you know, with five minutes left in the game. Mm -hmm. And seeing that, you know, is great. And then the way that he develops the players, like, it's no gimmicks to it. There's no gimmicks. It's like, all right, you guys wanna do all these 20, 30 move combos? It's not like that in the pros. Right. We're gonna keep it simple and this is what we do day in and day out. And I think that's, you know, that's some of the biggest things I'm learning from coach. It's going to be the mo of this team this year. We we'll get dive into into this year's team because there's a lot of excitement, I think, surrounding what's to come this year. What's the identity going to be based on what you guys have seen just in a month of legit practices? Uh, chip, on, chip on our shoulders. Definitely hang our hat, our hat defensively. We're definitely defensive. Who's the best team. defender on the team? Put you on the spot. I think we have a couple. Yeah, we have a couple. We definitely have a couple. A couple really For different good reasons. Yeah, different reasons as well. We have a, a lot of guys that could guard multiple positions, which is, you know, that, that's, that's, big. That, that's big in college basketball. You know, guys that can guard multiple positions, and you don't have to really worry about them, you know, getting scored on or not being able to, guard, you know, stay in front of the guy in front of them. And, you know, I think with us, like, the way that we want to play, you know, being able to shuffle guys in and out and things like that, I think that's going to be huge for our team. Like Hawk said. Um, By the way, there's a couple flies. That's why yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. It's it's like it's a little bit open air over there, mm -hmm. so that's why. I mean, yeah, food's so good, man. Yeah. I, I don't blame them. By no. the way, the cauliflower. Cauliflower, yes. It's good, yes. Woo. Man, I mean, it Amazing. is a healthy alternative to man, the buffalo, that's good. Bumbles, I get buffalo wing. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get another that's one good. too. I'm gonna get some those sticky wings. Hopefully, Hopefully there's no flies on this. Who cares? I'll eat them. You said there's a couple defenders. Name them. Um. Kendall Small is great defensively. He's always in the right spots. He knows he knows what's coming next. Yep. With him being a senior, uh, well, he's a redshirt junior, but really he's been in college basketball for four years. Mm -hmm. That experience is, is you know nothing nothing like it. Mm -hmm. You know, so he's seen it all. He, he came from the Pac-12. He played against some of the best players. He played with a bunch of pros. Um, so naturally, he's just gonna be ahead of some you know some other guys. Uh, we got Brandon McGee coming in, tough, yes. Oakland kid, yes. hard nose, blue collar, um, just a, a great on-ball defender. Um, you're not going to punk him, 
in, in no way, shape, or form. You know, when he's on the court, we could put him on the best player, and it doesn't matter if he gets scored on five times in a row. He's going to keep going at yes. the guy. He's going to keep getting in his face. He's going to try to lock him up. It, he's not going to get discouraged, you know? Um, I think I think Roberto Gallinari is, yes, is a way, really good defender way when he wants to yes, be. Way like when he when he wants to be, he really can lock up. Um, he's strong. He's tough. He's tough as well. He moves his feet extremely well. He's extremely athletic, as as you know. <laughs> um, what did let me ask you this? What did Birdie need to do to grow from from JUCO to Division One, and what does he need to do now to to grow from a junior D one to senior? Um, what did you say? I said mental toughness. Not in the fact that he's weak-minded, in the fact that in, when you get tired, are you going to push through that wall? You know, <clears throat> you know things like that. Are you going to be disciplined, you know, when you get tired? That, I think that's the biggest thing. I think discipline is Dis- the big, yeah. his biggest thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, he, if he can stay grounded and, and not get too off-kilter, I think he'll be great. Um, he, you know, sometimes he... You know, you probably saw it last year. If he didn't get a shot, you know, three times down, that fourth, that fourth time down, he's going to be looking for yeah, a shot. Not. And you got to know, and hey, maybe it's right now. It's not the time. Let's let's let the game, uh, let the game come to us. Let the flow, you know, let the game go on the flow, and then find your shot. You know, I think I think this year though, after seeing you know these couple of scrimmages, he's he's matured a lot. Like he's matured a ton and. I'm excited to see like what he does this year, just because just from what I've seen in the scrimmages. What do you think about the competition level with having, oh, someone, man, with like, having someone behind him now this year? Oh yeah, like you know you're not you're not guaranteed 30 plus minutes because there's no one on the bench. Now you have someone on your heels waiting to play. Yeah, like, do you think that might have helped him too? Oh yeah, 100. percent Like when you know that you can be taken out the game, that changes everything. You know, and. Um, just the, the competitive nature this year is just so much better, man. Like, like guys are like I, me. Like I'm, I'm from New York, so like being in each other's face and yeah. you know damn near being ready to fight is like normal. You yep. know, mm-hmm. obviously you're not going to fight. You're never going to take it to that level. But like the competitive nature is, was always there, you yeah. know. And our first year here it wasn't really like that. It was kind of more laid back, kind of a, a West Coast feel, in my opinion, like a, a West Coast thing. Mm-hmm. And now I feel like we have guys who are like, who are. Um, As an East Coast guy, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent, yeah. But I'm a West Coast guy. I don't get what you're saying. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> like, but it's it's it's, 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 it's a, you were born just a little soft. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a much different field this year, man. Um, guys are are extremely competitive, and it's it's fun to watch. You know, the last thing with Birdie, with Birdie, mm-hmm. and I've seen Sotomayor say a couple times now in practices. Hey, remember when you scored 41 against USF and then the next game comes back and it was, you know, I don't want to say a no-show because obviously he was there, but it was, you know, it wasn't even a fraction of right. what, what the output was against right. USF. Mm-hmm. So I think that that is kind of indicative of what, what mm-hmm. Coach Stoudemire's hope, oop, open mm-hmm. for him uh, mm-hmm. this year. Yeah. yeah. That was pepper shaker, yeah. by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now he definitely wants consistency in the play, you know. He's always said that he's like, I don't want a guy that's gonna go out and give me 31 game and then go give me five points the next. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's like, I'd rather at you at you know at a solid 12, 14 points at game in and game out. Mm-hmm. And he wants consistency in everything that you do. Exactly. What kind of tempo did, do we want to play at this year? You know, is it Pacific? And I, I ask this because Pacific traditionally, you know, under Coach Thomason was mm-hmm. always a you know they ran their sets mm-hmm. and it was you know grinded down. And then I think the assumption when when Damon was hired was that he's got to be you know more of an up tempo NBA style type. But does that hold true? Was that a myth? Um, we'll see. Yeah, I I, I think um, it's definitely not going to be a slow it down <coughs> kind of game. We haven't played like that since we got here. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the tempo will be a little even faster this year. Um, you think so? Yeah, I, I believe so. Uh, <laughs> From what I'm seeing so yeah. far, yeah, yeah. I, I believe so. I think, like, the fact that you asked that question, all I could think of in practice and in a couple of scrimmages, you know, Coach Ross are saying, we got a couple of unicorns out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, like, I'm just replaying images in my head, and I'm like, I get what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Like, not giving too much away, but, 
like Sha- Shakira was saying, like, you know, it's going to be fat, you know, a little bit faster, but it's, it's going to be exciting. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be exciting. I'm telling you, it's going to yeah. be exciting. I'm, I can't wait for yeah. everybody to be able to see these guys on the floor. Man. Mm-hmm. I'm <laughs> yeah. Me too, man. I don't yeah. know what else to say because yeah. I'm, I'm excited, excited yeah, I'm man. Excited. Like, I'm, I'm extremely excited. Of the new guys, who are you guys most excited about to see in their first year? I know it's putting you on the spot, but that's, that's the purpose of this. <laughs> so I'm put you on the spot. We talk about this often. Mm-hmm. Like we, we say the same people, yeah. but uh, man, I, uh, man, that's tough. It's really tough. I was, yeah. I'll say this. <laughs> no, no cop out. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know every every guy we have is really good. Absolutely, yes. and they bring really something different. Really good, to the and table. they all bring something completely different yeah. to the table. Yeah. We got Jabril Jabril Price Noel who played one through five. Yeah. You have Ajari Sani who, who could play the one, two, or three. You have um, Brandon McGee who can play one, one through three. Jeremiah. Um, Jeremiah Bailey, he could play one through five, or uh, he could play three through five. Yeah. He's a he's a he's a a, a four man that can shoot the ball, stretch the floor. Man, Jabril Jabril is a is a six eight point guard pretty yeah. much. Um, I mean, it's, it's there's the not one on. guy yeah. like the list goes on. Like this, there's, there's so many yeah. good players on this team. It's like pick yeah. your poison. Yeah. You know, at, at this point, so it's, it's really, it's, it's, <laughs> I can't just pick one. You can pick one. Who, there's got to be the one person for you where in your mind, and it's personal preference, where you say, man, mm. I'm excited to see what this dude could do in this type of situation. You're not, you're not insulting anybody. Yeah, 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 of course one, not, you know? of course <clears throat> not. If, if, I, if, I was, if I was to choose one, I'm really excited to see Jabril. Because he, his, right. his vision is like pro-like. Like it's it's insane. The, the passes he makes, the the things he sees on the floor. I'm like, man, how did he see that? Like, I I, I could see it, but I didn't yeah, think you yeah, could get that get through there. there. Yeah. Not and a lot of people man, can make that. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people yeah. at this level aren't making those type of plays. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I'd probably say Jabril. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna go against the grain a little bit because everyone else is getting a lot of you know a lot of support. I'm gonna go with Zach, Zach yeah. Cameron. Zach Cameron. I feel like he has the opportunity to play a lot of minutes and be really, really good for us. You know, because you we see it in spurts in practice where he, you know, blocking shots, getting out of area rebounds, spreading the floor and getting big time dunks. And he, if he could keep that energy up, you know, for, you know, big spurts in a game, I think that could be really beneficial because it'd be something different than what, you know, Anthony brings to the table, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say Anthony's not athletic, but Zach is, a high energy athlete mm-hmm. at that five position, and you know, if he could, you know, bring that, you know, night in, night out, he, he could help help us out a lot. What was it like to go through last year? A couple different reasons that I asked that. I mean, obviously, last year was another one of those years where you see how how much things can develop. But another reason is hardship, because I mean, you go back to that game in Vegas against USF, and what six, seven. Of, Available players was it six or seven? I can't remember, but I just six. know that, <laughs> that. I mean, that team tried to give its spleen to win that game and lost by one in overtime. Mm. But you look back, and I think everybody was just exhausted at the end of that season. They gave all they could give. What was it like to go through that from you guys' seats? Because um, you know, a lot was asked of you guys too. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, it was. It was tough, man. It was tough. To, it was tough to see because the guys worked so hard, man. Like, and to, to see like a guy like Lafayette Dorsey, for example, he just started getting his feet up under him and then he breaks his wrist. And he was such a huge part for us. I feel like if we had him those last, how, how was it, many, last, how many games? Last five games. Last five games. We had him those five games. We, we're number changer. three. We're yeah, number three we're in the WCC yeah. uh, conference tournament. And that changes things. We don't play USF for some reason. We have a problem when we're yeah. playing USF. So it would have been great, better to meet them later on. but. It is what it is. That's what we got. Um, so it, it was, it was tough, but it was, um, it was like inspiring the same, at the same time because they never complain. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, nobody ever yeah, complained. No everybody complained. they practice every day. Mm-hmm. Like is, is they 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 took on coaches' personality, mm-hmm. and that was that was real cool to see. I thought that not to. No, I, want, I want no, you to answer ahead. that too, but I thought it was evident in the day after they lost that game in Vegas, basically the end of the season. Right. I, I remember mm-hmm. going to the breakfast room and it was like someone had died. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But in that, there was the expectation 
that, that team expected to win. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like, even though it was bare bones against a, a team that they've only beaten once since coming back to the conference mm-hmm. in USF, yeah. uh, that team expected to win that game. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think that maybe isn't true if you go back two years ago. So I think the fact that the expectation was there to yeah. win speaks volumes. Yeah, 100%. No, definitely so. I think uh, last year, adaptability. You know, just being adaptable on a run, you know, with the amount of guys that we had practicing, the amount of guys we had playing, like, you know, being being coachable, being adaptable, you know, whether we're practicing for two hours or, you know, just coming in for a walkthrough the day before a game, you know, and just adapting on the fly, you know. Same thing with the coaching staff, you know, whether guys hurt or guys sick, like, we're able to adapt and make things work for us, mm-hmm. you know. And coach always said last year, like, man, like, I got to bring in a lot of my NBA experience into the situation because it reminds me of times where, you know, we might be playing a back-to-back or might be playing, you know, three games and five nights and we can't practice just because we're tired. So it's like, how do I bring that in for these guys? Okay, we're going to show in our practice. Okay, we're only going to focus on the things that we need to get better at or focus on the things that we're going to be using in the game. And just seeing that aspect and that approach, you know, the guys really adapted to that and they were happy about it. You guys are kind of a a de facto part of the coaching staff, so I think you'd have unique insight to this, but it's funny when a new regime takes over, usually you have the head coach and he brings a couple of guys with them and they've coached somewhere together before and they're trying to bring the band back together. It's the first time for this coaching staff. I mean, none of these guys had coached together before, so how would you describe the the interplay between the coaches' synergy and how they've been able to, to come together over the last three years and that evolution? Um, I would say there's a great balance. Mm-hmm. You have experience, you have youth, you have a lot of wisdom. Um, I think you have you have the one guy that calms everybody down. That's JD. Yes, he's the <laughs> he's the one when when everybody's losing their mind on the bench. He's like, we're gonna be all right, man. <laughs> Everything's gonna be okay. He helps Coach Wicks out a lot with yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Coach Coach Perry with so much wisdom, man. He's been mm-hmm. he's been coaching for what is he? He 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 changes the year every every twenty five, twenty six, <laughs> twenty eight, thirty two. He he's been coaching for like, for like twenty five years. Mm-hmm. He says. Uh, so, you know it, all that you know all that wisdom, um, and then Coach obviously being a pro, mm-hmm. and he coaching the pros as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's been great, and I think we've grown so much as a staff, uh, everybody's gotten better. You know, Coach Stoudemire is like, like, man, I think he's got so much yeah. better. You know, I think he's, he's, he's extremely comfortable. Like, he knows who he is now mm-hmm. as a coach. And that's been, like, really cool to see, you know. Um, and, he, and the same, actually with everyone, everyone, everyone yeah. I think it's, it's, it's like that. It's like everybody's getting comfortable with each other and they, everybody knows their spots, you know, right, everybody yeah. knows their role and everybody's a star at their role. Yeah. And I think that's, uh, it's been, it's been, it's been, a, it's been a cool journey. It's been a real cool journey. I, I think it's good that, you know, we're all easy to work with. Like no one's really confrontational. No one's trying to have their voice heard over someone else. But like, you know, like, Shaq said, like, you know, we all work with each other very well. You know, everyone's a star in their role, but at the same time, we know what Coach Sotomayor says goes. And at the end of the day, everyone just wants to get the job done no matter what. And no one has too big of an ego where any job is too small of them, you know, to be done. You know, <laughs> there's times where, you know, you know, we might need help just to go do some of the small things, whether it's laundry, whether it's, you know, watching film or helping out with scout, like everyone's like, oh, you know, if you need help, we're gonna get it done. Mm-hmm. Just, just that's cause that's how it's supposed to be done. And we all lean on each other. What would, <clears throat> what would a successful season, this upcoming season look like for you guys? You could, you could throw a, a win total out there. You could throw a- I'm not, do, I'm not doing a win total. Yeah, no, I'm no, I'm saying you total. can if you want to, yeah, but no. you can, you know, you could say the development of X, Y, and Z. I mean, what would what would how would success be defined this year for you guys? Now, as we're a couple days away from starting, um, growth. If we get better each and every day, you know, from you know practice on Monday to Tuesday, you know, game one to game two, just growth. Mm-hmm. You know, as long as we're getting better and improving, you know, then hopefully, you know, hitting our stride, you know, late into the year. 
you know, going into conference, you know, going to con you know conference tournament, you know, growth would be really big for us. Um, I say, I say, growth and maturity as well. Come on. Um, <laughs> you want to say like finish but, top three in the conference? You want to say? You of know. course, of course. If, <laughs> like, if I'm yeah, being, if yeah, I'm yeah. being honest, if I'm yeah. being completely honest, I want to win the conference. Yeah, we you know, the like obviously yeah. anybody yeah. like. We all want to win the conference, but you got to be realistic at the same time. You know, it's a, it's a process. It's not gonna it's not gonna happen overnight. Mm -hmm. You know, and we got. Um, luckily though, we have a lot of experience. Right. So I think we could. I think we could end top three mm -hmm. in the conference. Um, you know, if every if you know everybody stays healthy and you know we all stay the course, everybody stays bought in mm -hmm. to what you know what coach is preaching. Um, then I think I, I think we can be top three in the conference and. I think that's that would be a success for us. Before we before we go, we got you know now we're filming this on Halloween, so right. SIU Edward Bills is coming up on right. on Tuesday. Obviously, mm -hmm. we don't know much about them. We do know a lot about Nevada. <laughs> preseason, <laughs> shoot, yeah. preseason number seven. You play you know five. play them every year, and the preseason number five. five. Yeah, depending wow. on the poll you're looking okay. at. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, give us a little a little breakdown of, of both those teams and, and yeah. you know you've watched the film I've I'm watched sure the, I've watched way too much of both teams. So give us a little insight. Uh, SIU was a scrappy team, really scrappy. Like to get up and down. A bunch of shooters, a bunch of shooters, athletic. You know, everyone has free range to go, be in attack mode. You know, whether it's driving downhill, turning corners, using a ball screen, isolation, you know, they all have free reign to do that. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, Nevada Reno, they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna you know, rely heavily on the you know, the Martin twins, you know, Caleb and Cody, and then you got that beast in the middle, you know, that's <laughs> I wanna say they got three preseason first team <laughs> all conference guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. One of the Martin twins is preseason parade all American, like, you know, you you know what you're going to get, you know, when you're going to be playing them. You know, they bring in McDonald's All-American. Uh, they, they just want to get out and go. They want to, it's, it's really an NBA-style offense, get out and go. Let me ask you this. I'm going to put you on the spot again. As a, as a UNLV guy. I've never how, lost to Reno, so it doesn't matter. I've never <laughs> lost to Reno. 4-0 against Reno as a player. Okay, so that, that you're Count guaranteeing me. a win. I'm not, no, for, I said 4-0 as, as, <laughs> as a player. 4-0 as a player. Add that, add that part in there. Going back to last year, because UNLV, it was supposed to be the beast in that conference last year. Uh, yeah, how, yeah. how, 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 I know it was a gr I mean, that's <laughs> like split hairs. It was a great yeah. conference, but yeah. how disappointed were you last year when it was, it was, you know, Nevada, not UNLV, that, that kind of stepped up and went on that run? I mean, you know, as an alum, you know, our, our little brothers get lucky every now and then. You know, they, they, they're on a good run. I'm not even going to hate, they're on a good run. But don't forget, don't, don't forget, for, for, for a good chunk of while, we we're on top. Okay. We we're on top, so. Yeah. <laughs> what about you for these next two next two opponents? Um, I mean we're uh SIUE is a Midwest team, so you know what you're getting from that, they're gonna be tough. Mm -hmm. Downhill, they can shoot as well. So you know, you gotta prepare for that. Uh, I think we're gonna be we're we're way tougher this year, so I think mm -hmm. we'll be we'll be ready. Um Nevada, you know, <laughs> we all we all saw that. You know, right. we played them these past two years. Um we kind of know what we're getting into. Uh, the Martin Twins are really good. Caroline, yep. they got the McDonald's All-American. It's yep. a good team. Like, you know, it's self-explanatory. They're number five in, in the country. But um, with that being said, that's not the mindset we're going into mm -hmm. the game with. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going in the mindset this is just another team, and we could win this game, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I think we could have a chance. You know, if we, if we stick to the plan, I, I, anything is possible, right? You know, especially I, early on in the year. Yeah, especially early in the year. Nobody's good right now. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's bad. Right trying now. to figure it out. You mm -hmm. know, so I think we, I, you know, if we we stick to the we stick to the plan, I think we'll be okay. I'm excited. I'm excited to get it started in a couple of days. Me too. There's yeah, a lot of too. unknowns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What I do know is that Midgley's Public House, yes, here on the Brick Walk in Lincoln Center, is the place you got to come yes, before yes, before coming man. out to the Spanos yes, Center. Man, it, it was the the uh, the Prime rib slider, Primary, mm -hmm. yeah, pork the pork belly, belly yeah. which is delicious. These wings, I, I only could eat one because I yeah. felt like you know I was licking my fingers. <laughs> yeah. And then the uh, the 
buffalo cauliflower, wings, which yeah. tastes just like a buffalo wing. Yes. And it's not it's gonna good, be as heavy yeah. on you. Man. Right. Yeah, it was so really good, 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 man. Really it's so good. good. Fellas, yeah. thanks for no, thank you. Thank you, thanks man. That was down. great. Yes. Appreciate and, uh, you. We will we'll see you next time on Tiger's Roundtable here from Midgley's at Lincoln Center.